Hi guys, Quiz the Lazy Geek here. And today I want to talk about a problem that I've had, which is my imaging computer attached to the telescope is upstairs on the roof. My processing computer is in the living room downstairs here. I have two floors in between, and it's always been a pain to transfer the pictures from the imaging computer to the processing computer. So I could do it over Wi-Fi, but you know, it's like I have tens of gigs of data because I take lots of pictures because I'm in a light polluted area. So my subs are very short in length and have many of them. I use a hard disk drive to um, basically get the files from the imaging computer, bring them to the um, processing computer. But I'm lazy. I'm the lazy geek. I don't want to do that. It's too painful. So I've put together in place a system to get the files from the imaging computer to the processing computer as soon as the image is taken or the sub is taken. So each time there's a new sub, bam, it appears on my processing computer, which is also great to monitor what's happening to my setup. And I'm lazy, it works great. And so I can wake up in the morning, just go downstairs to the living room, turn on the heat or whatever, and just go ahead and process, which is awesome. So today I want to go through how I do that and what methods, what systems, what software I'm using to do that. So first things first, you need Wi-Fi or internet connectivity from your imaging computer to your processing computer. Or, you know, you could use a laptop for both, but that's cheating. That's what, yeah, that's just cheating. I could be using this, but I have this permanent computer for imaging. Cool. So to get Wi-Fi or network, uh, what I typically recommend is um, what you'll see on the screen now, which is the uh, um, what, what they call a mesh Wi-Fi system. Like it's all the trend recently. Um, there's Google Nest, there's uh, tons of little uh, things. I, I use something called the Deco M5, which has three routers, one in my living room, one is right there, and one is on the roof. Um, it's actually right next to my computer on the roof. And that gives me great Wi-Fi coverage throughout the house, which is uh, three stories plus the roof. And we know that Wi-Fi doesn't travel well um, in vertical distances. Uh, so I really needed that to get decent signal upstairs, which gives me not only um, the ability to sync the files, but also to use like things like Chrome remote, remote desktop, which is great. Okay, so once we have this, we've set up our Wi-Fi, everything's connected. What are we going to do? We are going to share uh, a folder. This Astro Multi tab here is my remote connection right now to my imaging computer. And you can see that I have a folder called uh, Nina in which all of my targets and my images are being taken. M106 is the target I've been taking in one of my previous videos. The files that I took at that time are in there, uh, some of them at least. Uh, from April 21st, here they are. And uh, I took some more yesterday evening. So we have all of those files. There's 925 of them. And I don't even know how big that is, but it's probably a huge lot of space, like 15 gigs over Wi-Fi. For, uh, for me, it takes quite a bit of time and I don't want to do that. So what I did is I shared this folder uh, sorry, I did not share the folder. I shared the folder on my processing computer. So on my processing computer, I have now I am in my processing computer. I have a folder called Nina Minix. And if I look into properties and sharing, you'll see that I am actually uh, sharing with a network path here, um, my Nina Minix folder. So this sharing part actually is fairly difficult. Uh, sometimes security comes into play um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. There's tons of tutorials on Google. Um, you should probably look it up yourself. But once you've actually shared the network path, um, you're already on the processing computer. We can now go back to the imaging computer. And the imaging computer, you'll see what I have on the left here. I have a drive that goes to my Nina folder on the processing computer. And the way that I've created this drive is I've just uh, used under drive tools um, or somewhere, uh, there is a section somewhere. If I go to this PC, I think it's, yes, map net network drive. We can map a network drive and I can put the address to my uh, shared folder from my processing computer in there. So I could say like it is uh, desktop uh, F0 T whatever 
zero fs6 slash or backslash what did i do uh, backslash uh, nina i'm not sure whether it's going to work uh, but uh, yes it did right so i've mapped a new drive and i called it x um, i'm actually going to remove that map dra drive later on uh, but here it is we've mapped a drive and so from my imaging computer i can access the files re relevant to nina on my processing computer which is great so now how do i get those two to sync together so for that we're going to use a tool called free file sync free file sync which as its name implies is a free file syncing software uh, it's also open source it's great it works awesome and i really like it so free file sync once you download it and install it you'll get hopefully an icon like that on your on your desktop um, this is real-time sync so i'm actually going to uh, minimize that for the moment and just open this one the green icon free file sync and the green icon actually lets me uh, set up what how i want the uh, synchronization to work and you can see here i have set up uh, from my local imaging computer drive c backslash nina to my uh, remote drive on the processing computer uh, nina Min minix and you can see that i have a synchronized two-way kind of option um, and if i go uh, here well it's synchronizing right now but i I don't want that so you can synchronize two-way you can set that up here with the little arrow to say two-way uh, for the synchronization you could be doing mirror or updates and on the left hand side you have the compare methodology which i have set to file time and size so it will look at the file name the file time and the file size to determine whether a file already exists on one of the other drives but not on the other so with this technique, I can actually just click on synchronize two way and it will synchronize two ways, but it's not real time yet, right? It's just like I do it um, on my own, uh, but you have this option here that is save as batch job. And this is what we want because we can save this as a batch job. And then uh, once we save, save that as a batch job, we can actually point that to real time sync. And you can see here, I have a uh, real-time sync. I, can actually, I could actually take the batch job and drag and drop it into here. It will automatically put the correct folders in here and uh, the command line will be automatically filled in there. And if I click start, but it's already running on my computer, I don't need to do anything actually. But if I were to click start without anything running, it would start just running all the time. And uh, I've actually uh, set it up in the batch, batch file, probably in the, uh, in the options somewhere. There is actually, I think it's on that red screen, there is a timeout setting that you can put, which is idle time here, 30 seconds, which means that after Nina has downloaded a, a sub from the camera, 30 seconds later, that sub will be transferred to my processing computer. So real time sync, it works great. There are two little things there. Uh, one is I need to actually get that running the whole time, which can be a bit painful to have that window always visible. So for that, you can actually on Windows use the task scheduler to actually schedule your, um, the, uh, the actual sync task to run in the background. So as an icon in your taskbar here with uh, a free um, and also being started every time you restart uh, the computer. And you can see I have it here, uh, free file sync. The task is set to be run uh, when at login time. So the trigger here you can see is at log on of any user. And the action is it runs this batch script, which I'll go into uh, in a moment there's uh, no conditions or, or anything um, and it just like runs without uh, without issues and that's it every time i restart the computer this task will be started and my file sync will run except that there is another problem which is that in windows um, windows has trouble reconnecting mapped network network drives over wi-fi the reason is it tries to connect to those network drives before the Wi-Fi has finished connecting. 
So it fails miserably. And uh, until someone comes in and opens here and click on, clicks on the network drive, it won't be available. And we can't have that, can we? So again, I'm a lazy geek. So what I went ahead and I, I found on the internet, someone who actually wrote a script just for that. And if I go into here, you can see I have a script called uh, reconnectdrives.batch. It's a super long script here, uh, created by a guy called uh, Battle Nonsense, and I love that name, that will basically connect to the network drives, the map network drives, after the Wi-Fi has been connected, which is great. And at the end of that script, I added that little um, line at the end, which is, that I want to uh, start my real-time sync with the options selected in the batch uh, file that I, I created from the green icon window here by clicking on here. And that command line, I just copied and pasted it from here. And that's it. Then I have nothing else to do. And so I'll put the link to uh, the router that I personally use in the description. I'll also put a link to free file sync. I'll put a link as well uh, to the script that can be run to uh, map the network, uh, not to map the network drives, but to connect to the map net network drives after the Wi-Fi is actually connected. And it's, a, it's something that has been going on for years in Windows and it's never been fixed. So I don't think it's gonna get fixed anytime soon. So with this, I can actually look at how it's working. I can just like go inside my, uh, my folder, my Nina folder here, and we can go in M106 and I'm just going to create, um, well, yeah, I can create a new folder. It should work too. And I can create just a text document that I called a new text. .txt. And now I have to wait 30 seconds for uh, the real-time sync to actually take effect because that's the setting that I've put in uh, my batch file. So let's wait 30 seconds and then we'll be looking at the desktop computer under Nina Minix M106. I should soon be seeing that folder and that file appear once the synchronization has been done. So let's give it another 10 seconds and I'll use the magic of editing. Oh, well, I didn't need to use the magic of editing. Here it is. We have the new folder and the new text. And because I have a two-way sync, it also means that if I delete something here, so on my processing computer now, I deleted it. Now I can go back to my imaging computer and see when those two will disappear. Again, we have to wait 30 seconds, but after 30 seconds have elapsed, we should be able to see that those two have disappeared. And maybe we'll use the magic of editing. Maybe we will not use the magic of editing. We'll see. I'll give it five seconds, maybe 10 seconds. I don't care. Uh, five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay, let's use the magic of editing. I'll press F5, not yet. There we are. The, they have disappeared. So the two folders are completely in sync, which means that when I want to make space on my imaging computer, I just need to move the folder on the processing computer to some other uh, folder somewhere. And it will just, from the perspective of the imaging computer, that folder has been removed. It will delete all that folder and all the files. And this is great. I have nothing to do. I'm super lazy. And so it's perfect for me. And that's it. I hope this can be useful for other people as well, because I find it to be such a big difference with having to just like bring your hard disk drives physically to your imaging computer and then putting that on the, uh, the processing computer. So thanks for watching. See you next time. And uh, thanks. And you know, if you like this, please like and please subscribe. Leave a comment about what you want me to cover or if you have any questions. Thank you and see you next time.